Good morning and welcome to the CBI Road to Net Zero Conference 2021. I'm Mariano Hotter and I'll be with you over the next two days. We'll be bringing together industry leaders, politicians and special guests to discuss the considerable challenges on the journey ahead to meet our climate change commitments. You'll have your chance to put your questions to our speakers with our Q&A sessions throughout the day. Please also follow at CBI Tweets for updates during the event. Use the hashtag CBI events and hashtag road to net zero to join the conversation. And do engage with the event platform. There's plenty to explore there. But first, to open the conference, I'm joined now by CBI's Director General, Tony Danka. Tony, it's great to see you in person. Great to see you in person. Thank you for hosting us the next couple of days. Absolutely my pleasure. We're at a moment now, aren't we, where we have to translate ambition into action. Yeah, I think that's right. We've just had a weekend of the utmost ambition from G7 leaders. And what I hope we're going to talk about, I'm certainly going to talk about it now, is exactly what it really means uh, if we're going to get to COP26 in good shape. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Marianne. And good morning and welcome to everyone joining us virtually today. We meet in the wake, as I said, of an important G7 conference where world leaders came together to extend the task of vaccinating the world and to start the hard yards on tackling climate change. We've now got just under five months to go until the UK hosts COP26, a summit that will be far harder than this weekend and even more critical because we have what remains of this decade to fundamentally reshape the world's economy have carbon emissions and limit the global temperature increase to one and a half degrees. The scale of this challenge has always been seismic, what UN Climate Change Executive Secretary Patricia Espinosa calls the great human challenge of our times. The world has no room for failure. The climate crisis is worsening and currently we are way off track. The UK, as COP co-hosts, must achieve in Glasgow what previous COPs have not. Yes, we need to raise global ambitions, but also push further, faster, harder than ever before to make this the boldest year of net zero action yet. And this means securing stronger binding commitments alongside concrete plans to deliver the goals of the Paris Agreement from every country, including the US and China, the Earth's biggest carbon emitters. It also requires us to establish the foundations to accelerate the green revolution, such as a global approach to carbon markets, sustainable finance, and the shift to clean power. There can be no standing still. This is the moment. So with the world soon to be on our doorstep, what does it mean for the UK to lead on the road to net zero? Well, put simply, the best way to inspire global action on decarbonisation is to lead the charge right here at home. Nothing less than unprecedented, unstoppable action from the UK government in partnership with us in UK business will be enough in the next five months. It's in our hands to set the world on an irreversible path to net zero by 2050. It's in our gift to establish the UK's credentials as a true net zero leader. While we have strong political intent, the UK was the first advanced economy to both enshrine our net zero targets in law and more recently in April to go beyond what was agreed in Paris, committing to reduce emissions by 78% by 2035. And we have a global stage as this weekend's G7 summit showed. As the Prime Minister highlighted, the G7 generates around 20% of the world's emissions. And the pledges made by the G7 members in Carbis Bay send a powerful signal of the landmark progress that the UK can push for and achieve at COP26. This includes commitments from the G7 to end government funding for new unabated coal power generation by the close of 2021. And ahead of COP, to set out their long-term strategies to achieve net zero by 2050 and then do whatever it takes to achieve the 1.5 degree target. Finally, we have real expertise. Our credentials in emerging green tech and solutions such as carbon capture usage and storage and hydrogen power could help us lead in these and other growing green markets for decades to come. So we have all these things, but do we have a plan? 
Well, last year, the UK government outlined its aspirations and the route it will set for net zero in its 10-point plan for a green industrial revolution. The plan signals the low-carbon technologies and industries that will be crucial to our future net zero economy. From advancing the UK strengths in offshore wind to decarbonizing aviation and forging this hydrogen economy. And it includes ambitious targets for the penetration of these technologies. And with clear policy goals to work towards, it is another crucial step on the UK's decarbonization journey. But it answers more of the what than the how. It doesn't have the level of detail businesses need to realize all this or that we've been promised will come. So, as early as possible in the next few weeks, we need the government to finally publish, first, the UK's first ever heat and building strategy, setting a course for emission-free buildings. Second, the transport decarbonization plan, a world first covering every mode of transport. Third, the hydrogen strategy, to achieve the UK's target of five gigawatt of low carbon hydrogen by 2030. And fourth, HM Treasury's net zero review that will inform the UK's transition to net zero by 2050. But this fuller strategic map is necessary but not sufficient to get delivery underway because much of the delivery falls, as usual, to business. Well, we are ready to go. But we need more than architect sketches. We need proper blueprints. So today, the CBI is publishing its 10-point response to the UK government's 10-point plan. Working with hundreds of companies at the forefront of this endeavor, we've identified the most critical policy moves that need to be made next, filling in the blanks of the government's outline to take us from climate ambition to climate action as rapidly as possible. In return, businesses must get to it, decarbonizing their products and services, wider operations and supply chains to make the shift to net zero irreversible. Let me focus on just three of the most pressing priorities here. First, green buildings. The government aims to achieve over 600,000 heat pump installations a year by 2028 but we still don't have the fiscal, regulatory, or delivery frameworks in place to meet this target. So business is calling for a new national delivery body to help coordinate the mammoth task of retrofitting almost one million UK homes every year to 2050 and to see it through. So government should legislate that all new boilers installed after 2025 must be hydrogen ready. And following the removal of the Green Homes Grant, provide long-term, easy-to-access financial support for homeowners and landlords to make their properties energy efficient. Second, unlocking UK investment and growth in green tech. The government wants to develop five gigawatts of hydrogen production capacity, four clusters focused on carbon capture usage and storage, and 40 gigawatt of offshore wind by 2030. Well, for that to happen, it must announce the time frame for the next leasing round for offshore wind in UK waters and confirm the business models it intends to employ to encourage businesses to invest in and boost UK hydrogen production and CCUS. And third, decarbonizing transport. As the sales of electric cars, vans and buses rise year on year, we need to ensure that the UK can keep up in this fast growing global market. This includes speeding up the rollout of our charging infrastructure with the publication of new electrical vehicle delivery plan by the end of this year and funding the development of UK gigafactories. We believe around seven more are needed to strengthen our foothold in global electric vehicle and battery supply chains. Every one of these moves will galvanize not only the UK's transition to net zero, but also establish UK competitive leadership in what is likely to be the greatest growth opportunity in global business for decades to come. This we know because at the CBI, we've spent the last six months analyzing emerging economic trends like the world shift to net zero to inform our new economic strategy for the UK. It's called Seize the Moment, 
How can business transform the UK economy? And we've spoken to hundreds of businesses of every sector, size and region, as well as politicians, think tanks, metro mayors, unions and health experts. What we found was incredibly exciting with opportunities for every business and benefits that could make a material difference to all people's lives in the UK over the next 10 years. For example, in exporting, with all this investment at the green frontier, we can develop new IP, new products and services and attract new customers all over the world. Just looking at the neighbouring EU market alone, the UK could increase its market share to capture a billion pounds more from carbon capture usage and storage, three billion more in offshore wind goods and services, eight billion pounds more in hydrogen electrolyzer production, and 18 billion pounds more for electric vehicles and vehicle batteries. We can also leverage the shift to net zero to use our resources more efficiently and help businesses grow here at home. In fact, we estimate that the UK's transition could create at least 240,000 net new jobs over the decade, with many coming from the demand to retrofit homes, upgrading insulation and heating, and generated by SMEs. And these jobs aren't just in London or the South, but in every part of the UK. Actually, a key part of helping us level up will be ambitious plans for new zero carbon industrial clusters across the country. From South Wales to North East Scotland, these clusters could protect and generate jobs, investment and opportunities across their supply chains and surrounding communities. At the same time, the UK's reputation as a global center for sustainable finance could help establish us as the world's number one decarbonization enabler. <clears throat> People sometimes ask me whether the city of London's best days are behind it. I say we're only getting started. We can build on our expertise and credibility, boosting our issues of green bonds, reinforcing our expertise in carbon offset trading, and helping to craft international financial regulation and standards. These will make sure every decade from now is more sustainable than the last. So <clears throat> why should government have the confidence to commit to these more detailed plans? Will they work? Yes because firms in the UK are already leading the way globally and they really do stand ready to go further. This includes Aviva, blazing a trail in the global insurance industry as the first major insurer working to become a net zero carbon emissions company by 2040. Renewable energy giant Siemens Gamesa, which of the near 1500 blades made at its plant in Hull so far has exported over 170 blades to Belgium, for the sea-made offshore wind farm in the North Sea and has more than 200 blades to be sent to projects in Germany and Denmark in the future. Barclays has set itself a target to provide at least 100 billion pounds of green finance by 2030 in an effort to help uh, engage their clients on the transition to a low carbon economy. And both Diageo and Heineken are collaborating with Glass Futures to cut the carbon from their bottles exported all over the world. But it isn't just well-known big names making waves. Newcastle business Twinview specializes in digital applications and services to improve the energy efficiency of the built environment. With stretching net zero targets of their own launched back in February 2020, just before the shock of the pandemic first hit. Yet despite this, the team has gone on to achieve incredible success establishing partnerships across the world, including in Australia, the Nordics, and Vietnam. There's also Ecometrica, who since their creation in 2008 has become one of the world's top sustainability brands, combining their expertise in environmental sustainability accounting with award-winning software and data services to support businesses and governments in sustainability planning operations and reporting just some of the many great examples, but of course, the reality is we still have miles to go and work to do for every business to get where we need to be. So my ask today is simple. If you haven't already, please sign up to the UN's Race to Zero campaign today and commit to becoming a net zero business by 2050. Here's how. 
As a larger business, you can join firms as diverse as Bureau Happold and Burberry and Branston Limited in pursuing science-based targets to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement through initiatives like Business Ambition for 1.5. Or if you're smaller, by becoming part of the SME Climate Hub, where you can access tools and resources to develop your net zero plans, as well as measure and reduce emissions. Climate change is probably the only race in the world where the race to zero is a race to the top. In only these past few years, decarbonization has moved from being a threat to being a risk to be managed, to being a PR imperative, and to now being a genuine source of business value with first mover advantage. It's why the market capitalization of clean energy leaders, Enel and Ostad, has surpassed that of its peers. While over the last 10 years, close to six out of the 10 sustainable funds have outperformed non-ESG funds. Unilever's purpose-led sustainable living brands are growing 69% faster than the rest of the business and delivering around 75% of the company's growth. An online marketplace, Etsy, which has moved to offset 100% of its carbon emissions from delivery and packaging, doubled revenues last year. Well, the CBI, of course, is here to help you every step of the way, including through initiatives like our Goal 13 platform, where you will find practical examples of steps that firms like yours, of every shape and size, are taking to transition to a low carbon future. It's searchable by sector or initiative, outline what, committees, uh, what companies are committing to, the changes they're making to pursue their targets, and the impact on both emissions and financial performance. But if you still think that the shift to net zero is too big a step to take right now, talk to us. We will help you design the path forward. And if you think that you're already a leading net zero business, think about where you can inspire wider action throughout your industry, your supply chain, your customer base, and your local community. Over the next two days, whatever your size, sector, or the scale of your net zero successes so far, we've got experts, ideas, and tools to help you go further. Covering everything from the inside track of the government's preparations for COP26 and reflections on this weekend's G7, to the power of technology to achieve clean growth, and the UK's potential to lead as a low carbon hub, as well as the ins and outs of setting and delivering on your own net zero targets. At the end of these two days, we want you to feel invigorated, equipped and ready to go all in on your net zero journey. The road to COP starts now. This is the UK's chance. Together we can build a legacy founded on good green jobs, sustainable growth, and a more resilient, competitive net zero future for every UK business and community for generations to come. This is the world's moment. This is the UK's moment. This is our moment, and we must seize it. Thank you. And now I have the pleasure in introducing the Right Honourable Alok Sharma with his insights into the role business needs to play if we are to meet our climate change targets.